Test, test, testing. One, two, three. It's working. Hello, hello out there, folks. How are you doing? Thank you for joining me again. This week I have got so much stuff on the table, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, we got Bobby Jindal. He is next on our list of candidates that we're going to take a look at. And uh, I've got highlights from his announcement speech. I've got some other uh, information on him. We're going to be taking a look at Obama's Iran deal. Uh, Kerry, John Kerry has been testifying in front of Congress and trying to justify this ridiculous uh, arrangement he has with Iran. We're going to be taking a look at that. Another video came out about Planned Parenthood and the evils that are going on uh, in this organization and their affiliates. And I've got some other information uh, concerning Planned Parenthood for you. We're going to take a look at that. Donald Trump, he can't seem to find his way out of the news. And I think he can thank Republicans for that. So we're going to take a look at some attacks that have been going on with him. Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz calls out corruption on the Senate floor. We're going to hear what he had to say. Wait till you hear this. And also, I've got some tinfoil hatters lined up. This is just ridiculous stuff. We're going to... Uh, take a listen to what some of these guys had to say. All of that right here, right now, on this, the Ray Warner Show, hosted by me, Ray Warner. Thank you so much for uh, joining me and listening in today. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, any feedback, uh, if you just feel the need to rant or vent, feel free. The email address is the Ray Warner Show at gmail.com. So Bobby Jindal, Piyush is his name, P-I-Y-U-S-H, uh, Piyush Jindal. Bobby is just a nickname, rumor has it, he picked it up from uh, Bobby Brady of the Brady Bunch. He is currently the governor of Louisiana, and he did serve in the United States Congress as representative for the 1st District in Louisiana. So he does have some history in Washington. Uh, that was going back to uh, 2003. He was first elected as governor in 2007 and re-elected in 2011. And uh, he, of course, has announced that he, too, is seeking the GOP nomination for the White House uh, for 2016. And I've got some speech highlights uh, from his announcement. This is Bobby Jindal. I am governor of the great state of Louisiana, and I am running for president of the greatest country in the world, the United States of America. My parents' eldest son became governor of Louisiana. It was the aftermath of Katrina. Our economy was locked in a downward spiral. Our biggest city was reeling. For 25 straight years, more people had left this state than had moved into it. Louisiana was in big trouble. So we had to make big changes. We had to believe in Louisiana again, and that is exactly what we did. We reformed our ethics laws. We went from one of the worst states to one of the best states in the country. We privatized our outdated government-run hospital system. We reformed education with nearly 100% charter schools in New Orleans. And now we have statewide school choice because every child deserves an equal opportunity for a great education. Instead of the child following the dollars, we made the dollars follow the child because we trust the parents, not the bureaucrats, to make the best decisions for their kids. We did what they said could not be done. We shrank our government. We cut our budget by 26%. We cut the number of government bureaucrats by more than 30,000. Now, it wasn't easy. The big government crowd fought us every step of the way. They protested. They filibustered. They even took us to court, but in the end, we won. Today, we have more people moving into Louisiana than out of it. Our highest population in history. Our kids are coming home. And now we have more people working than at any time in our state's history with the highest incomes in our state's history. A job for your family. A paycheck in your mailbox. They're the ultimate proof that your state is doing things right. The big government crowd, they hate what we have done. They say that we have cut the government more than anyone. The government budgets are always running low on funds with me in the governor's office. My response to the big government crowd is simply this. Yes. 
I am guilty as charged, and our state is better off for it today. It's time for the folks in Washington to admit the truth. You can't grow the economy and the government at the same time. It is an either-or choice. Now, Hillary Clinton, she wants to grow the government in Washington. We want to grow the real economy out here in America. Here's the key difference. Democrats evaluate success in terms of the prosperity of government. We define success in terms of the prosperity of our people. The United States of America was made great by people who get things done. Not lots of talk or entertaining speeches. Oh, to be sure, there are a lot of great talkers running for president already. But none of them. Not one can match our record of actually shrinking the size of government. If great speeches helped our country, we'd be on easy street right now. The guy in the White House today, he's a great talker. We have a bunch of great talkers running for president. We've had enough of talkers. It is time for a doer. I'm not running for president to be somebody. I'm running for president to do something. We owe voters more than just a tirade about the problem. We owe them honesty about our solution. I will do the things that you cannot do in Washington. I will say the things you cannot say. If you want to be with the cool kids, if you want to be liked by the media, if you want to be invited to the right cocktail parties, you have to accept there are things in Washington you just cannot do. They say you cannot reduce the size of government or the number of bureaucrats. Oh, you might be able to cut the rate of increase here and there. But they say you cannot actually cut government spending. But we can and we will. They say the $18 trillion national debt can't really be addressed. It's just a part of doing business, so it's better not to talk about it. But we can and we will. They know Social Security and Medicare are going bankrupt, but they're afraid to do anything about it. So they deny the math, they pretend everything is fine. But we can reform and save these programs, and we will. In Washington, they know the voters want the border secured, but they refuse to do it. But you and I can, and we will secure our border. Finally, they say we can't really repeal and replace all of Obamacare. But I'm the only candidate who has written a replacement plan, a free market plan, that focuses on reducing costs. We can repeal Obamacare, and we will repeal Obamacare. Today's Republican Party in Washington, D.C. has been beaten in a submission. It is increasingly afraid to speak the truth. It's time to say what everybody is already thinking. The emperors in Washington, they're not wearing any clothes. I am running for president without permission from headquarters in Washington, D.C. I am tanned, rested, and ready for this fight. Here's the truth about most politicians. They're selfish. They're followers, not leaders. They worry more about their own fate than the country's fate. They take polls, they figure out where the public is headed. They run out front, they pretend to be leading the parade. It's easy to be a popular politician. Don't rock the boat. Kiss a bunch of babies, cut ribbons, don't make big changes. But I'm not going to take the easy way out. If you want somebody who's just going to pretend that everything is fine, just make some small tweaks, then you want somebody else. I'll make this promise to you. I will never lead from behind. I know that some believe that I talk about my faith too much, but I will not be silenced. I will not be silenced in order to meet their expectations of political correctness. They don't seem to accept the idea that you can be both intellectual and Christian. They can't fathom the notion that you can be both smart and conservative. They need to get out more. There's a big country out here with millions of Americans who believe in God and are not ashamed to say so. I'd be wary of a president who didn't seek wisdom from the Almighty. I don't know about you. I've met many smart people who lack wisdom. Yet Christianity, it is under assault today in America. The liberals, they have forgotten their history. Religious liberty is not some quaint notion from the past. It is fundamental to our freedom. That's why it is protected in the First Amendment to the Constitution. 
I want to say this slowly so that even Hillary Clinton can understand this. America did not create religious liberty. Religious liberty created the United States of America. And it's time we stop trying to divide ourselves against each other. Hillary Clinton is always trying to divide us by ethnicity, by gender, by economic status. I don't know about you, but for me, I'm sick and tired of people dividing Americans. And I am done with all this talk about hyphenated Americans. We are not Indian Americans, African Americans, Irish Americans, rich Americans, or poor Americans. We are all Americans. We cannot allow people to immigrate to our country so they can use our freedoms to undermine our freedoms. That is exactly what has happened in Europe, where they have second, third generations of immigrants who refuse to embrace the values and culture of the countries they have moved into. We must not let that happen here. If you want to immigrate to America, you must do so legally. You must be ready and willing to embrace our values, learn English, and roll up your sleeves and get to work. Republicans must stop being afraid to lose. If we try to hide who we are again, we will lose again. You've heard Jeb Bush say that we need to be willing to lose the primary in order to win the general election. We're going to help him do that. What Jeb Bush is saying is that we need to hide our conservative ideals. But the truth is, if we go down that road again, we will lose again. Let's endorse our own principles for a change. Let's boldly speak the truth without fear. Every Republican will say they will fight to protect the unborn, repeal Obamacare, secure the border, and destroy ISIS. I won't simply talk about these things, I will get these things done. It's time to level with the American people. This president and his apprentice-in-waiting Hillary Clinton are leading America down the path to destruction, economically, culturally, and internationally. But the most devastating thing they try to do is redefine the American dream. Instead of the dream being to have opportunity and freedom to control your own destiny, to make your own way. Their dream is for the government to take care of you, to make people dependent on the government. We want to guarantee equality of opportunity. They want to guarantee equality of outcomes. The simple fact is, they're trying to turn the American dream into socialism. Now, the folks in Washington, they may call that the American dream. Out here in America, it's not mine either. Out here in America, in the real world, we call that the European nightmare. As America goes, so goes the world. We are the light of freedom in a dark world. And it's time we started acting like it. I will not be intimidated from talking about the fact that radical Islam is evil and it must be destroyed. Containment is a strategy for losers. But as General George S. Patton famously observed, Americans play to win all the time. Americans don't play to lose. President Obama has it wrong. Secretary Clinton has it wrong. Our allies need to trust us. Our enemies need to fear us. It is time we play to win again. As president, I will have four objectives. I will secure our borders. I will replace Obamacare with a health care system that focuses on reducing costs and restoring freedom. I will grow the private sector economy by shrinking the size, scope, and reach of the federal government. And I will rebuild America's defenses and restore our standing on the world stage. If you are chasing a dream, looking for a land where the people are free, and the opportunities are real. I am asking you to believe again. Believe in what we can do. Believe in what America can do. Thank you. May God bless you. May God bless the United States of America. So that was Bobby Jindal. I don't quite know what to make of uh, that speech. Not a lot of specifics in it. I like to hear specifics when I'm listening to these candidates. You know, he's up there uh, going on about how, uh, you know, they say you can't cut such and such a spending. We can and we will. And they said you can't do ABC. 
but we can and we will. And they said you can't do X, Y, Z, but we can and we will. Now, those may be campaign promises, but they're not very specific. And I like specifics. Uh, I think it was uh, Lincoln Chaffee I did a while back where I said it sounded like the uh, people asking the questions actually knew more about the issues uh, than he did when he provided his answers. As, you know, what are you going to do about China? We're going to have a conversation. I want specifics. I want specifics from these candidates. And I, I, you know, I like Bobby Jindal. I just, I feel like he didn't really give me a whole lot of specifics. I like how he's strong on his Christian faith. Uh, that's something I can certainly appreciate. And uh, I've got some fun facts here on Jindal. Just so you know, he was one of the finalists for Mitt Romney's VP choice. Obviously not selected. That went to Paul Ryan. Also, you should know he was originally for Common Core, but he did drop Louisiana from the program in 2014 when it kind of morphed into a, a federal takeover of education. When the administration tried to force it on Louisiana, Jindal filed a lawsuit. Now, that is uh, still pending, and uh, it's, of course, uh, the lawsuit is filed to try to stop Common Core from being implemented in Louisiana. So he is currently definitely against Common Core, at least after it became uh, some kind of federal overreach. And like Scott Walker, uh, Bobby Jindal was also the target of a recall for his education reforms and his proposed changes to Louisiana's retirement system. Uh, his opposition had trouble getting enough signatures, though, to a petition, so the recall never happened. Jindal does have an A rating from the Gun Owners of America. His voting record is 100% pro-life. Those are kind of the big issues as far as I'm concerned. You know, you can usually tell everything you need to know about a candidate by his stance on the Second Amendment and pro-life. That right there is everything you need to know. But anyway, uh, he supports teaching intelligent design in public schools. That's another big thing that I really appreciate. All in all, Bobby Jindal is a hardcore conservative. Like I said, not a lot of specifics. But he did do some good things in Louisiana. So that's Bobby Jindal. Next week, uh, I think it's Chris Christie we'll be taking a look at. And uh, plenty more to come, folks. Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, lots of other good stuff. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Turn right. You have reached your destination at the Ray Warner Show. Major Ferguson, he and three of his sharpshooters are at one location, they're up high in the trees, and they're just picking off American soldiers, American officers at will. They're just, just popping and dropping these guys. And they've been doing it all morning. And suddenly a guy comes riding into the picture, and there's actually two American officers. And for whatever reason, Major Ferguson, he said he just had this impulse that came over him and said, I've shot enough guys this morning, I don't think I need to shoot anymore. And so, he had his rifle lined up on this officer, had it lined up, and he was about to pull the trigger, and he said this impulse suddenly came over him not to shoot, and so he didn't shoot. And he said the officer looked up full in his eyes, and they stared at each other, the officer looking right down the barrel, looking up into the tree where he's sitting with the barrel, sitting with his rifle. He didn't pull the trigger, and the officer looked at him, and then just slowly turned his back to him and just walked off on his horse. The two officers were going off. The officer turned out to be George Washington. Later. His men that were with him said, don't you know who that was? You could have ended the American Revolution. So those are the kind of miracles that you see throughout history that are inexplicable unless you understand that there is a divine hand directing the counter plan. And that's the way American history is, is written. Always speaking the truth. We have the emails. The emails that show global warming is a fraud. We have the proof that they conspire to cover up the truth. Real-time analysis. So I guess Pelosi was wrong. We don't need to pass the bill and find out what's in it because it doesn't matter what's in it. It's just going to be interpreted however we want, willy-nilly, to mean whatever on any given day. Keeping it real. Zealots. 
who randomly shoot a bunch of folks in a deli. Well, that was just random. That was, who knew? I mean, who knew the Islamic nut jobs would find Jews in a kosher deli? He holds nothing back. Liberals, take your brain for a test drive. Every day on the Ray Warner Show. Hey, ISIS, welcome to Texas. We're back. Thank you, folks, so much for listening. This is The Ray Warner Show, hosted by me, Ray Warner. If you want to email the show, if you have comments, questions, concerns, or feedback for me, or you just feel the need to rant or vent, feel free. The email address is Show at gmail.com. Now, if you listen to the quick reports, and you should, then you heard me talk about Obama fast-tracking Uh, illegal aliens from the border to the ballot box. And he is doing just that. If you didn't hear it, go check out yesterday's quick report. Now here's another little tidbit that's bound to anger you. In Obama's uh, never-ending quest to crush anything and everything American, he is now changing the oath for immigrants to take to become American citizens. Effective uh, July... 21st of this year, that's about four days or so ago, the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service has put out a new policy manual, and uh, this new policy manual allows for modifications to what's called the Oath of Allegiance. If you don't know, to become an American citizen, there is an oath that you must take, and part of the oath is that you will promise to take up arms and defend the country should the need arise, loosely translated. But under the new policy, the oath may be, and I'm reading this from the manual, may be eligible for modifications based on religious training and belief or conscientious objection arising from a deeply held moral or ethical code. Uh, Also is not required to belong to a specific church or religion follow a particular theology or belief, or to have had religious training in order to qualify. So you can uh, modify the oath based on religious training or belief, even if you've never had any religious training or belief. And also, it may submit but is not required to provide an attestation from a religious or other type of organization, as well as other evidence, to establish eligibility. Some people are wondering why we have this new policy. Uh, Just so you know, there are already exceptions. Nobody's going to force the Quakers, for example, uh, to go off to war against their religious convictions. But they can still serve. They can still serve the country in some capacity. They can fill supply lines. They can serve as uh, medics or other medical uh, personnel, staffing hospitals, uh, whatever. Whatever their convictions will allow them to do to serve their country. But this new policy allows for new citizens to forego service to the country altogether. Just another little poke in the eye by the Obama administration to strip away any sense of American patriotism, you know, another move to strip away the heart and soul of America. And uh, as I'm sure you've heard by now, Obama sent his little deal with Iran to the UN. He did so ignoring the strong opposition from the Senate. But Congress, uh, all of Congress, the Senate, the House, they they have allowed Barack I to get away with complete lawlessness uh, low these many years, and in doing so have rendered themselves completely irrelevant. So I don't know how much uh, backbone they have to do anything about it anyway. But uh, the UN voted unanimously to accept uh, his little arrangement with Iran. Now, Secretary of State John Kerry has been trying to defend his stupid agreement. Now, this was part of his opening statement. Listen to what he said about Iran already having weapons anyway. The chairman mentioned in his opening comments some phrase about unless we give Iran what they want. (laughs) Folks, they already have what they want. They got it 10 years ago or more. They already have conquered the fuel cycle. When we began our negotiations, Iran had enough fissile material for 10 to 12 bombs. They had 19,000 centrifuges. 
up from the 163 that they had back in 2003 when the prior administration was engaged with them on this very topic. So this is not a question of giving them what they want. I mean, it's a question of how do you hold their program back? How do you dismantle their weapons program? How do we dismantle their weapons program? That's a question. Does anyone besides me remember a time when the United States knew how to do this? How do we dismantle their weapons program? You know, I'll bet some well-placed Tomahawk cruise missiles would do the job. Oh yeah, talk about dismantled. It would take a long time for the Ayatollah's horses and the Ayatollah's men to put the weapons program together again. I mean, that's one way. And those missiles can be fired right from the safety of naval ships in the Persian Gulf. We don't have to go assault Iran with troops on the ground or anything like that. We also have aircraft. They can fly in and carpet bomb their nuclear facilities. That would do the job, too. Now, I'm just as humane as uh, the next guy. I, you know, I don't want to kill the people that are working in these facilities, not unnecessarily anyway. So you drop leaflets. You drop leaflets that say, hey, we're going to, you know, bombs in five, get out. And, uh, you know, five minutes later, you drop the bombs. Now, here's another statement Kerry made to Congress. Everybody here at this dais knows what the options are for actually stopping that. It's called military action. Because they're not going to stop it otherwise. They've already proven that. They proved it during all those years. So, under this terms of this agreement, Iran has agreed now to remove 98% of its stockpile. Voluntarily, they're going to destroy 98% of their stockpile of enriched uranium. They're going to dismantle two-thirds of their installed centrifuges. And they're going to take out the existing core of an existing heavy water reactor and fill it with concrete. You know, this is where I just start shaking my head. How is somebody this... You know, I don't even know what to call it. That was not edited at all. John Kerry, in one sentence... Everybody knows military action is the only way Iran will stop their weapons program. They've proven it. And in the very next sentence, in this deal, Iran has agreed to dismantle. Uh, how can you be this stupid? And I submit to you, he can't possibly be that stupid. He just can't. If John Kerry can tie his own shoes, then he has to know how ridiculous those two sentences are side by side. He has to know. Everybody knows it's going to take military action. Iran has proven it. Then what are you doing over there? What are you doing talking to these people? What on earth are you even having a conversation with them for? If they've proven it, if you yourself already know what it's going to take, why are you wasting everybody's time? Did you know that under this deal, we, the United States, guarantee the safety and protection of Iran and their weapons program? Did you know that? That's in the deal. The United States will protect their weapons program. So here's a scenario for you. Israel, which is like the last country on earth with any common sense, Israel decides, you know what, we need to do something about Iran's nuclear weapons program. So they decide they're going to go in and take it out. What do you think Obama is going to do? I'll bet this promise of protection he'll honor Unlike the promise of protection to, I don't know, say, Crimea, the one he ignored. Of course, uh, after the deal was done, the, the uh, Ayatollah went out there and gave a speech. Uh, here is part of what he said through an interpreter. Whether the deal is approved or disapproved, we will never stop supporting our friends in the region and the people of Palestine, Yemen, Syria, Iraq, Bahrain, and Lebanon. Even after this deal, our policy towards the arrogant U.S. will not change. So as far as he's concerned, nothing's changed. Whether there was a deal or not, they are going to support their Islamic nutjob partners in the Middle East and abroad. And there will be no change in their policies, uh, as he put it, towards the arrogant United States. Way to go, John Kerry. Boy, you sure showed them who the bigger idiot is. And he was asked about uh, the Ayatollah's comments. Listen to this. 
The Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei said, uh, made a statement, they were very negative, and he basically uh, saying that he wants to stay at war with the United States, etc., and he will still support the proxies. Uh, how do you read his statements? I, I don't know how to interpret it uh, at this point in time, except to take it at face value that that's his policy. But I do know that often comments are made publicly and things can evolve that are different. If it is the policy, it's very... Uh, disturbing. It's very troubling, and we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, those comments are very disturbing, aren't they? You know, John Kerry, and I hate to single him out because he's just doing Obama's bidding, but in reality, pretty much all leftists are like this delusional. They sit around and act like we're the bad guys. We, America, that pours money into other places, uh, into the world, you know, we who fight for freedom for uh, people around the world. We who ended slavery. We who desire only to spread liberty around the world. Liberals act like we are somehow the bad guys. And Iran is somehow either morally equivalent or even on higher moral ground than we are. That's how delusional they are. And John Kerry is no different. He can say in one sentence, military action is the only way. And in the very next sentence, start describing Iran's promise to disarm themselves through his little arrangement. Delusional! <laughs> you know, if I was in charge of these negotiations, this the, day one would have been about 15 seconds long. I'd walk in there, I'd have, I'd have some pieces of paper prepared with the names of the Americans that Iran is holding. And I would walk in there and I'd put them down in front of that Iranian delegate and I'd say, you bring all of these people to this table tomorrow and these talks will continue and walk out. That's day one. And if Iran didn't do it, ratchet up the sanctions. If they still don't do it, embargo. I'd have half the U.S. Navy in the Persian Gulf. I wouldn't allow Iran to export any oil. You know that they have no refineries in the entire country? Iran has absolutely no refineries. They have all that oil, but any car that's burning gasoline, that's imported. So you embargo uh, Iran, you not allow them to ship out any oil, which is their livelihood, their money, and you uh, keep trade from happening. You don't allow any gasoline in. Those people would start starving. You don't think they would comply? They would comply quick, fast, and in a hurry. The other thing is he keeps talking about the P5 plus one or whatever. You know, the nations that are represented, there's, I think, a delegate from Russia, from China, from France... Uh, there's the UN is represented. Where is Israel? Israel has the most to lose in this ridiculous deal. If I was in charge of the negotiations, that's another thing I would do. Israel would not only have a representative at the table, but that representative would be spearheading these negotiations, and we would be backing them up, Israel, our ally. That's another thing I would do. The way John Kerry has done this is just absolutely ridiculous and I, I can't believe he has to be smarter than that he has to be smarter than to think we can trust Iran to disarm themselves and, and even after he himself said military action is the only way military action everybody knows is the only way they've proven it but hey they promised to disarm so like I said folks delusional We'll be back. Stay right there. You're listening to the Rainwater Show. Resistance is futile. Mike Devers, in his book, said that I had a short attention span. Well, I was going to reply to that, but oh, what the hell? Let's move on to something else. It is my job to put forward a vision of the country that uh, benefits the vast majority of Americans. It is my job to make sure that uh, my party is behind those initiatives, even if sometimes it's breaking some China and going against uh, some of the dogmas of our party in the past. And we've done that on things like education reform. And it's my job to rally the American people uh, around that vision. We don't yet have uh, a uh, a complete strategy. I just heard about this. I, I get well briefed uh, before I come out here. 
We're going to gather all the facts, find out exactly what happened. I heard on the news. I do not remember. I wish uh, I knew. I, I have no idea who it was. We want to make sure that we get it right. It's not really something I followed closely. Not having been there and not seeing all the facts. I didn't even know that Acorn was getting uh, uh, a whole lot. It was bad. We didn't know how. The nuts wanting to find out exactly what happened. It is going to be hard to find a path. What I'll do is I will find out uh, what exactly you're referring to. I don't know. I first learned about it from the same news reports that I think most people uh, learned about. The details of that are, are not yet worked out. We talked to these folks because they potentially had the best answers. I don't remember what the number was precisely. Nobody wants to find out more what happened than I do. I certainly did not know anything. We don't have a strategy yet. It is my job to put forward a vision of the country. Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Welcome back, folks. Thank you so much for listening. This is The Ray Warner Show, hosted by me, Ray Warner. If you want to email the show, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any feedback for me or the show, you can email any of that. I have an open email policy. Email me at any time. It's always open. And the address is Show at gmail.com. There was a new Planned Parenthood video this week, and this one is probably worse than the first one. Uh, In this one, you can hear this woman, Dr. Mary Gatter. Again, I am making the uh, quotation marks in the air around the word doctor. But she is bargaining to try to get the highest price she can for her harvested organs. At one point, she even says, uh, you know, whoever throws out the first number is at a loss. We all know that. And she's reluctant to do that for that reason. She also jokes about wanting a Lamborghini. Uh, I played the sound bites in the quick report. I'm not going to do it again now. These people are just so crass in how they sit there and discuss what they do. Murdering children and then what they do with the children they've murdered. And, of course, in the wake of this latest video, uh, some journalists are starting to uh, look, seek out Planned Parenthood's donors. Uh, Coca-Cola immediately had Planned Parenthood pull their name from the list, as did the Ford Motor Company and Xerox. But uh, just for your information, here are the 38 companies still listed as donors to have directly funded Planned Parenthood. Adobe, American Cancer Society, American Express, AT&T, Avon, Bank of America, Bath & Body Works, Ben & Jerry's, Clorox, Converse, Deutsche Bank, Dockers, Energizer, Expedia, ExxonMobil, Fannie Mae, Groupon, Intuit, Johnson & Johnson, La Senza, Levi Strauss, Liberty Mutual, Macy's, March of Dimes, Microsoft, Morgan Stanley, Nike, Oracle, Pepsi, Pfizer, Progressive, Starbucks, Susan G. Komen, Tostitos, Unilever, United Way, Verizon, and Wells Fargo. Uh, Just for your information, those companies are still listed as donors who are helping to fund Planned Parenthood and the murder of children and dissection of their bodies and the harvesting of organs for profit. Just throwing that out there. Uh, Donald Trump still managing to hog the spotlight, and I think he owes that mostly to the other candidates and uh, other Republicans that are doing everything they can to shut this guy up, but he ain't having it. Senator John McCain stepped in it when he called Trump supporters crazies. Not very nice, Mr. McCain. Uh, Adding insult to injury, the crazies he was referring to were were, uh, from his home state, Arizona the state he represents as a senator. So Trump, being Trump, fired back and briefly questioned uh, McCain's war hero status, but then did go on to 
uh, reaffirm it. He said he was a war hero because he was captured or gave himself up or whatever. And what's baffling most to me is that McCain really didn't answer this, didn't discuss it, didn't want to talk about it, and was more than eager to just forget it and move on. And there may be a very interesting reason why. Did you know that in the early 90s, President Bill Clinton and Soviet Premier Boris Yeltsin uh, sifted through Russia's gulags looking for records or remains of American POWs from Vietnam? And of course, they didn't find anything. And based on the testimony of a former high-ranking Czech security official, a search of archives in Prague turned up some 200 records of missing U.S. POWs from Vietnam. But uh, the release of this information was blocked by none other than Senator John McCain. What's that all about? Now, what we know for sure is this. 33 POWs faced execution for treason after Vietnam. But President Nixon uh, pardoned all POWs, and uh, John McCain was on the top of that list. Colonel Ted Guy was McCain's commander as a POW in Vietnam, and according to him, McCain collaborated with the enemy. According to him, McCain is accused of giving information that led to 60 U.S. aircraft being shot down. McCain is accused of training North Vietnamese in air defense. He's accused of making over 30 propaganda broadcasts against the United States. You know, McCain later moved to have those broadcasts classified when he was elected to the Senate. Now, these are the only real and supportable accusations against McCain. There is uh, substantial evidence to support them. You think McCain wants this stuff to come to light? Donald Trump should demand that the American people see McCain's broadcasts and see the records of his debriefing and read the statements made against uh, him by other POWs especially his commander, this uh, Colonel Ted Guy. McCain is one of these guys, I'm so sick of these establishment types, these people who think they're entitled, these, you know, especially on the Republican side, you know, and it's, it's both sides, it's Republicans, it's Democrats, it's just really more of an establishment in Washington. And uh, if you haven't heard, these people are actually meeting and trying to figure out how to keep Trump from the debates. This is no joke. It was the Republican Governors Association, them along with some donors. One idea they hatched was to have the top three under Trump, which right now would be uh, Jeb Bush, Scott Walker, and Marco Rubio, to refuse to participate in any debate where Trump was present. They then hoped that the other candidates would follow suit, and uh, Fox, who was hosting the first debate, would be forced to ban Trump. I seriously doubt that there is enough uh, solidarity for this among these candidates, but it doesn't matter. I think they dropped the plan. Uh, but I also think uh, the fact that they are even conspiring at this level speaks volumes. Why are they so afraid of Donald Trump? Well, of course, it's because he speaks his mind. He speaks the truth, and he refuses to be politically correct. And they all hate that, especially the establishment types. It's hard to fathom why these morons can't figure this out. Trump is ahead in the polls because he doesn't take any crap from the liberal media. He doesn't bow to political correctness. And he doesn't back down from a fight. And they can't handle it. Rick Perry. Now, I like Rick Perry. But listen to what he said about Trump. The White House has been occupied by giants. But from time to time, it is sought by the small-minded the divisive figures, propelled by anger, appealing to the worst instincts in the human condition. A barking carnival act that can best be described as Trumpism. A toxic mix of demagoguery and mean-spiritedness and nonsense that will lead the Republican Party to perdition if pursued. Let no one be mistaken. Donald Trump's candidacy is a cancer on conservatism, and it must be clearly diagnosed, excised, and discarded. Donald Trump was born into privilege. My fellow Republicans, 
Beware of false prophets. Is that not the lamest thing you've ever heard in your life? To all of you Republican bozos that can't handle a straight-talking, no-nonsense competitor in this race, if you don't like what Trump is saying, then answer him. Let's hear why you think he's wrong. Instead of some petty second-grade name-calling, this is what Rick Perry resorts to? I mean, he really sounded mad in that soundbite, didn't he? You know, and this is all because Donald Trump has the courage to do and say what all these other cowards will not. He's even given it to the media. Last week, we heard an interview uh, with him. Uh, I forgot her name, but she clearly was being negative, which is what these liberal journalists do. I'm making the quote marks in the air again around journalists. And this past week, Trump was interviewed again, this time by Anderson Cooper, and you can imagine how that went. Uh, Trump finally called him out on his nonsense. Listen to this. Well, among general voters... I don't know. You keep bringing up negative. You only want to talk about negative. <laughs> why don't you bring up the positive? Well, I, I did. Why I mean, Washington, you start off... Excuse me. Start off you start off with the interview. No, I started off with the Washington Post Bowl. Bowl. You started off the interview with a poll that I didn't even know existed. I started off with the Washington Post Bowl. Okay, yeah. Intentionally. Sure, I knew you, sure, you, would, sure, you would accuse sure, me of that. Sure. All I know is every poll I'm leading in, and, and you give me these two polls where it's different states. Right. They're not even a national poll. You'll check the record. I started off with the Washington Post Bowl where you are way out in front. I think it's very unfair. You're talking to me a poll I never even saw. You're talking Today, it's, a, it's, a it's not even a poll. Okay. It's, it's on three different states, and you're hitting me with this. Okay. And I think it's a very, frankly, I think it's a very fair un, a question. Okay. I think it's an extremely, you start off the interview with that. You don't say, I led in the Fox poll, I'm leading in the ABC you're Washington leading, Post poll. You're leading across the board. Well, you did. I am leading across the board. Right. And then you hit me with this poll that I didn't even see before, where, oh, gee, it's not even that kind of a poll. All I know is I have a very big group of support. And I think it's one of the I mean, reasons is that, you're way let me tell you, the people don't trust you, and the people don't trust the media. Right. And I understand and politicians. why. You know, I've always been covered fairly accurately, because it was usually a financial press. And, you know, numbers are numbers, okay? And my numbers happen to be great. So I was always sort of treated like fair. With the media, it's, in not all cases, some, some of the political media is great and really honest. Even if they don't want to be, they're really honest. But I find that 60, 70 percent of the political media is really, really dishonest. Now, if you haven't seen the video, it's hilarious. Anderson Cooper, you know, Trump is sitting there saying, you know, this is why the people don't trust you. They don't trust the media. They don't trust you. And he's just, Cooper is, he's trying to regain control. And he's got this smirk on his face. And, he, you know, he just doesn't know what to do. Because Trump isn't having it. He basically hijacks the whole thing and talks about what he wants to talk about and doesn't let the libtard journalist drive the discussion off a cliff like they always do. This is what people like about Trump. He takes the fight right to them. He takes it to the politicians on both sides. He takes it uh, to the media. He doesn't put up with any crap from these people. And Ted Cruz, now this was exciting. Did you hear Ted Cruz call out Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell on the Senate floor. Called him a liar. On the Senate floor. Listen to this. What we just witnessed this morning is profoundly disappointing. A number of weeks ago when this Senate was considering trade promotion authority, a group of senators gathered on this floor and blocked TPA for many minutes because they were pressing for the Export-Import Bank. They huddled on this floor and negotiated a deal in front of C-SPAN, in front of the world. Shortly thereafter, we had a Senate Republican lunch where I stood up and I asked the majority leader very directly, what was the deal that was just cut on TPA and was there a deal for the Export-Import Bank? It was a direct question I asked the majority leader in front of all of the Republican senators. The majority leader was visibly angry with me that I would ask such a question. And the majority leader looked at me and said, there is no deal, there is no deal, there is no deal. Like St. Peter, he repeated it three times. Following that public discussion, Senator Mike Lee and I approached the majority leader afterwards in which he emphasized, again, there is no deal, I will do nothing, I oppose the Export-Import Bank, 
All I said is they can offer an amendment like any senator can to any bill. As a result, I cast my vote in May in support of TPA because I support free trade. And I felt I had no choice but to assume that when the majority leader spoke to 54 Republican senators and made an explicit promise that he wasn't lying to us. Well, as TPA moved on, as it went to the House, it became abundantly clear there was a deal. There was a deal in the House for the Export-Import Bank. The majority leader looked me in the eye and looked 54 Republicans in the eye. I cannot believe he would tell a flat-out lie. And I voted based on those assurances that he made to each and every one of us. What we just saw today was an absolute demonstration that not only what he told every Republican senator, but what he told the press over and over and over again was a simple lie. So Senator Ted Cruz is another one. He is calling out Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, a Republican, someone from his own party, right there on the Senate floor, calling him out for flat out lying to him and the rest of the Senate, the rest of the Republicans in the Senate anyway, about the stupid trade deal. He also called out Mitch McConnell. I didn't play it, but during that speech, if you, if you could find it, go listen to Ted Cruz's speech about Mitch McConnell. It's about 20 minutes long, and it's good. Listen to the whole thing. And in there, you'll hear him say, right now, there's legislation uh, floating around out there, and it's aimed at defunding Planned Parenthood. Mitch McConnell is blocking that. What's that all about? Now, of course, after Cruz's speech, uh, the last thing I heard before I started recording was McConnell is now fast-tracking defunding for Planned Parenthood. Yeah, you better. God bless you, Senator Cruz, for calling out this liar and exposing him for what he is and making him snap to the will of the American people. Boy, he sure flipped on that one fast, didn't he? You know, and this is what people are craving. Someone like a Senator Ted Cruz or a Donald Trump who will just go out there and fearlessly talk about the issues and tell the truth about the issues to the people, point out all of this corruption and garbage and expose it. And as long as we're on the subject of corruption and garbage, you know, folks, the more I hear this, every time something comes up in the media about global warming, I just... I have to roll my eyes. And this time, it's the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He has been chosen uh, by the French government to join some other, you know, uh, Nobel Peace Prize winners, philosophers, UN Secretary Generals. Arnold Schwarzenegger is now going to be the champion of global warming. And I want you to listen to what he had to say. We've been hearing a lot from the Pope lately on this, which is even more uh, disconcerting, because uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, just listen to this soundbite. This is this is what this is the statement he made, where he wants the doctrine of global warming to be preached in uh, any religious venue uh, from here on out. Now, I've starred, of course, in a lot of science fiction movies, as you know. But let me tell you something: climate change is not science fiction. This is a battle in the real world. It is impacting us right now. This is bigger than any movie. This is the challenge of our time. And it is our responsibility to leave this world a better place than we found it. But right now, we are failing future generations. So I challenge you to go home after this meeting is over, after this conference is over, Go home to your congregations, to your churches, to your mosques, to your temples and your followers and inspire them to fight for a clean energy future. We must do everything that we can to communicate better and to preach and to inspire people to join our crusade. So there you hear him say he wants, uh, he wants everybody to go back to their churches, go back to your synagogue, go back to your mosque. 
all the religions of the world need to come together and start preaching the gospel of global warming. <laughs> this is the governor tell, wanting to tell the world to start preaching global warming. Now, as a believer, and I know many of my audience are also believers, you know, the, the whole one world government thing coming together, and here along comes Arnold Schwarzenegger telling everybody to start teaching about global warming at religious venues. You know, there's just something, I don't know, it's just something very disconcerting about all that. But uh, he wasn't the only one who spoke out about global warming last week. Listen to this clown. One of the things that preceded the failure of the nation state of Syria and the rise of ISIS was the effect of climate change. That was Martin O'Malley, presidential candidate on the Democrat side, making sure that he doesn't get the nomination. Yeah, global warming is the cause of the rise of the Islamic State. Do I even need to add to that? And that's going to do it for this week, folks. Thanks again so much for listening in today. Don't forget, if you want to email me, if you have any questions for me, any comments, any concerns, any feedback, if you just want to rant or vent, feel free. The email address is Show at gmail.com. And make sure you hit the show.com. There's the uh, new opinion page there. I got a lot of good articles uh, I'm, get, I'm receiving that are posted there. And if you have anything you want to write about, you can uh, feel free to do that and send it to me. And I will post it there. I don't care if you're Republican, Democrat, liberal, conservative, doesn't matter. Send me an article. I will post it on the opinion page. And while you're at it, uh, as long as you're browsing the website, make sure you visit the shop. You can pick up all of your Ray Warner Show gear. There's mugs and t-shirts and lots of other fun stuff. And also consider a donation to help keep the Ray Warner Show alive and fighting for conservative values. And I want to uh, send out a hearty thank you to all of those who have uh, donated. It, believe me, it is very appreciated. And don't forget, I don't know how you listen to the Ray Warner Show or the Ray Warner Quick Reports, but there are many ways you can listen. If you go to theraywarnershow.com, there is a place there where you can enter your email address and subscribe. And if you do, you'll get a link in your email. You can also subscribe at the Ray Warner Show YouTube channel. Every show and quick report is posted on the Facebook and on the Twitter. Uh, you can also get the show and subscribe at iTunes. You can download it from iTunes. You can also download it from uh, the website, theraywarnershow.com. However you listen to the show, I am very, very grateful that you do. Please spread the word. Let's grow the audience. And I will see you next week, folks. So long.